Hey, Dan here, and hey, welcome to my garage. <laughs> well, remember the, remember the uh, video I just put up on the battery light going off on this uh, nitro or uh, nitro, yeah, Jeep compass. Well, unfortunately, the battery now is dead, and there's no way for that alternator to charge that. So. Unfortunately, at this point, um, she drove it home, went to start it, and it wouldn't start. I put a jumper on it. It started, but once I took the jumper off of it, it ran for a couple of seconds after that, and then all the lights went on, all the lights on the dash went on, and it still ran, but there wasn't enough uh, electricity in the system for it to continue um, and with that happening it won't even let you put it into gear so when you get a debt when you get an alternator when you get a battery light you need to get that to a, uh, get it to a shop as soon as possible so I was I went home I got the trailer second time today as you know uh, and put the jumper box on it and it was a big jumper box so it was able to start it and run it and I was able to get it up on the on the rack or on the trailer so that's where we're at all right we're home driveway is full of vehicles <sighs> all right all right we're home it's safely on the rack the Sentec did what it needed to do what I needed to do should I say mm. started it ran it for a little while I wasn't gonna drive it home on a on that um because unfortunately the battery um, once your alternator has gone on this thing or well, you might as well say it gone when it's down below it's charging limit that's when your light comes on uh, below 12, 12 volts I believe normally it's around about 14 it's down at about 12 volts it's not going to charge you're gonna be running off your battery. And once the battery dies, then you're you're done. Um, and I found in this case, when the battery's done, or when it's down, all the freaking dash lights are gonna come on, and you're not gonna be able to start it. And not even at that point, you're not even gonna be able to put your selector in gear. So the alternator finally went completely and as you saw I might have shown you in that other video for this and I haven't edited yet um, the lights and all were flashing and couldn't get it to start of course and of course you're not um, not gonna be able to get it in the gear to even move it so you got to put a good jumper box on it or jump it to get it started and then go from there because the battery is just not enough doesn't have enough juice anymore to uh, do anything um, and that can happen if you're driving down the road and it, the alternator goes and all of a sudden all the flashing lights and everything and it's going to shut down and you're going to be coasting and no power steering and all that crap. So, um, you get a, you get a battery light, get it off the road as soon as you can. Uh, what you're looking at is, I don't know, I've, it, it's, it's simpler to me to go ahead and take the alternator from the bottom. Um. Some people say you can take it from the top, but I, I got going on it, and you still got the bracket in the way. So I don't, I don't know. Um, and I've done probably six of these now, and you've probably seen every video. And I take it from the bottom, and to do that, you gotta just draw, uh, pull your pl pull your plug on your AC compressor. Go ahead and pull your brackets. These are 13s. You got 
one. There's one up in here, which is two. And then there's one on the outside. These all go into the oil pan. Then you have the longer ones. And this one goes, there's one. You've got another one, which is two. And then you've got another one up on top. You'll feel it. You'll see it. Um, so you've got three long, and they're, and they're long bolts, okay? Now, be careful. This is aluminum. You don't want to be cross-threading anything, okay? Very, very important. So once you do that, you can pull this. You can pull your compressor down and a little ways out of the way. Um, your alternator has got a long bolt that goes through on the bottom of the thing here. I don't know if I can get a shot in there. All right, there you go. There's your bolt on the bottom. And then you got a bolt on the top. And then once you get that, once you get those loose, then it'll it'll rock out. All right, so what you got to do is you got to maneuver that alternator out through your frame and down, okay? Um, and then once you've got it out, remember how it went in, okay? Drop it down here on, on the floor or whatever. And you got your ears, which is where your bolts go through, all right? So make a note as to how that went in. Um, I think I can remember just for the heck of it. Here's the old, here's the old one. And when I dropped it down, there's going to be a little difference between the caliber and the, the Jeep. Now, the Jeep motor's a little bit bigger. You got to make sure you got your ears right, okay, when you go to put it up. See what I'm saying? The ears. Got one over here, over here. Now you'll just remember how you get that out. You may, what you may have to do, you may have to get you a, on the caliber, what I had to do is I had to get a crowbar and then wiggle, wiggle the mount, wiggle the engine a little bit so you could get it clear to drop it down. Um, the hardest part of this whole deal is going to be getting the serpentine belt back. You're also going to have to remove the single pulley up here so you can get the get that bolt out the one for the alternator the lower the lower one this one here okay if you can compress this what this does is once you tighten it down it pushes against the frame uh of the of the bracket up there so if you can it won't be on a brand new one okay so it's a little sleeve just Pound that sleeve back so it's flush, and you'll have no problems aligning um, the top the top bolt, and then you'll be able to slide this under, and then slide the bolt through. Um, it's not a the bottom of that. It's not it's not a solid hole that goes through here. It's kind of a hook, um, just enough that that bolt rests in there and locks down on it. So, all right, next thing is to go ahead and get this pulley back up there. Um, I got to tighten these. Tighten these all up. Um, let's see. I'll have to look. I think they're like they're not that much. They're like 40 foot pounds or something like that. It's not not that much at all. Oh, here. Alternator mounting bolts are 40 foot pounds. Uh, your drive idle pulley, the one I'm doing right now, is 35. All right. Like I said, this is the freaking hardest part of the thing. Is routing the dog gone. serpentine because it's so tight you need a 16 inch wrench to go on that tensioning pulley in this case I've got an adapter system but and it will go on there it's just trying to get the belt past it so it's kind of playing playing with that um, you're gonna have you're gonna have to pull it off the lower pulley coming off of your power steering pump when you go around that upper upper pulley and it's going to go down around another pulley and then up over the alternator down around the AC compressor around the crank pulley and it's got to come back up around the tensioner pulley and then that's going to come back under the uh, 
your uh, water pump. So it's, that's the way that it's gotta go. Uh, you can jump right on. Just, just Google it and it'll show you exactly how that thing goes. It's just a matter of freaking playing with it. And you got, you, I don't know, if you, if you don't have to take the wheel off, <laughs> good luck to you. Um, but I had to take the wheel off. So, but that tensioner pulley is a, a, a 16. And if you buy one of these kits here with the arms and everything, uh, what a, get that, get that tensioner pulley back as far as you can. Um, so, here we all get it started up and hopefully that alternator functions properly. It should. It was a brand new one that I put on the caliber. Alright, it's back together again. Make sure you got a can plug here. Um, of course you got your, uh, you got your plugs for your alternator. Oh, uh, let's see if I push that thing back and lock it. Yep, alright. There's a little lock, a little locking device. You can see that red, red thing. Um, so you'll pop that back and then squeeze it, pull it off. Um, a 13, 13 nut that holds your battery cable on there. Your, like I said, your bolts, your bolts going through or um, 15s or uh, 13, 15. That's a 16. Your pulley, pulley is a 16. Your, these here are 13s. They're all 13s. Um, combinations, I got a smaller ratchet for that. I got a small short use another ratchet wrench use a combination of things it's just going to be a matter of doing it so this your offset here 13 is very very um very very valuable because you can put put right in here right over that and then start it and see where i'm at you can go right up over here start that one so um that basically takes care of that. Now, like I said, the hardest part, going to get the freaking serpentine belt back on. All right. Like I said, this is the freaking hardest part of the thing is routing the dog gone. Serpentine, because it's so tight, you need a 16-inch wrench to go on that tensioning pulley. In this case, I've got an adapter system, but and it will go on there. It's just trying to get the belt past it, so it's kind of playing, playing with that. Um, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to pull it off the lower pulley coming off of your power steering pump when you go around that upper upper pulley, and it's gonna go down around another uh, pulley and then up over the alternator down around the AC compressor around the crank pulley and it's got to come back up around the tensioner pulley and then that's going to come back under the your uh, water pump so it's that's the way that it's got to go uh, you can jump right on just just google it and it'll show you exactly how that thing goes it's just a matter of freaking playing with it and you got you i don't know if you, if you don't have to take the wheel off <laughs> good luck to you um but i had to take the wheel off so but that tensioner pulley is a a uh, 16 and if you buy one of these kits here with the arms and everything uh what a get that get that tensioner pulley back as far as you can um so here we all get it started up and hopefully that alternator functions properly it should it was a brand new one that i put on the caliber all right battery's plugged in let's see if See if we're good good and see if we got a battery light.
official start because I know the battery was pretty dead, but I've been charging it, so. Crap. All right, let's try it again. All right. Wait a couple seconds here, see if the freaking battery light comes back on. So, everything's good down there. Go back in now, see if, see if the uh, battery's charging. We got a battery light on my pissed. Okay, battery light is out. This does not have an amp meter on, so you can't tell. Can't tell the charge. If you've got one of those transmitters, you run your phone off into your stereo system, most of them have a battery. Battery charging and, uh, meter. I'll put the charger back on for a little while and shoot. Decently charging. Um, you'll have to remove your radiator reservoir out of the way as well when you go to do that. Kicked into here. Battery voltage. Transmission. Internal shutdown. VAP system. Transmission control. The VAP system. Oh, you just went through all. Alright, so that's where we're at right now. Um, and that was because Mr. Alternator decided he wanted to be an issue. And unfortunately, I got a check engine light. So we got to, I got to reset. Got to reset everything because she won't pass inspection with a check engine light on. Alright, so resetting. Well, everything has to be off. Anything back on. Alright, everything everything was erased successfully. Back reading back up again and everything's gonna go freaking red. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so now I gotta go drive it and get everything to clear. All right, there it goes. This check engine light is out. We're good. Now I gotta drive it and get everything to clear. Main thing is the alternator light is out. All right, that's the conclusion to. The Replacing the alternator on this 08 Jeep Compass. I believe I have everything repaired. Now everything's just got to go get inspected. It's been a long six months, I'll tell you, as you can tell through the videos. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, definitely share. And you'll catch me on the next Dana's Garage.